in Scotland. The uh, I think it the at the moment um, it is the possibility of being able to save um, uh, to the cultural identity of the countries can be done through open source software. For example, with OpenOffice, uh, if OpenOffice was uh, like available in the Gaelic language, which it is soon to be, I believe, and then that means that we can, that the people who are interested in Gaelic can write down the stories or the histories in Gaelic, and it can be all nicely formatted and look lovely and everything like that. But then we've got uh, the first archive in Gaelic, and it can also be uh, given to other people, and they can view it and change it or the way that uh, they want to because it's in this open document format. Um, but also open office, as we've seen actually in Australia, the, the libraries of uh, Australia are archiving all of their documents in uh, open office. And it's really the reason that they're doing it is for that very reason, because that they want to be able to have a software that they know that will be available for them for the next like 20 years and it won't it's not going to be going away they don't need to pay for it it's just going to be there so they've got this huge archive so hopefully that will happen in Scotland too so that's what there are also a lot of people of uh, can you please tell us your name and what it is that you do professionally all right uh, hi my name is Bob Kerr uh, I've got uh, a uh, degree in computing and communication systems uh, from Greenwich University. I was I used to work for Universal Music Group. You might have heard of like Universal Studios, uh, and uh, there I was a technician, going uh, meeting people, doing like the, the hands-on talking face-to-face -face stuff, uh, and then I moved on to eventually becoming uh, application specialist for. North and South America for uh, a rollout of where they changed all the computers throughout the, all the two continents and my job was to help package up those applications and distribute them uh, over those two continents so and that was quite a number of years ago but that was the my main like computing experience but at the moment I'm an open source advocate that's what I dedicated the last uh, year specifically to do. What started you off on dedicating this last year to open source advocacy? I became very concerned that there was a company that had uh, a dominant position on the information structure of my country. The, the fact that there was this company which could basically do anything that they wanted with my computer and there was no way that I could find out what it was that they were doing. Uh, I just decided that uh, I wanted to be able to see if there was an alternative and the, uh, I looked at the Apple, Apple Mac and I also looked and then I started learning about open source and, uh, and Linux and when I started seeing uh, open source software. I must admit I went through a long phase of being a little bit confused about what it was that, uh, how this was created, how did it make sense? But, uh, and after a quite a while I realized that this was something which was absolutely amazing. And, uh, uh, and I got hooked and I've been watching it develop uh, and over just the last year, I mean, I know that it's been going for a lot longer than that, but I know from my job experience that the software that is available at the moment would be quite adequate for 80% of the population of my, uh, or just about everybody that I know, like the whole of Europe, because it's in different languages, and just the functionality of it. And the I got... Um, and I realized that this was a very powerful thing. But 
there, there's also some strange things about it in that because there isn't necessarily a lot of money behind it, nobody really knows about it.